Good day, everyone. My name is Yuri Namesnikov, and I'm working for Kaspersky Lab uh, for nine years already. And I'm heading the Russian part of a great team. Uh, so my presentation for today is about uh, like our research and uh, mostly about ATX. So it, like a first presentation of the day, it will be also food for thoughts. Um, so my overview for today is uh, a bit of explanation, who am I, uh, what we are doing. Um, then we will go uh, and uh, see what uh, happens during several like months uh, and uh, why attackers uh, doing bad things. Mm, uh, there are arsenal, very interesting techniques that we found recently, and certainly stories. Mm. So, uh, this is uh, our leader, Eugene Kaspersky, and uh, he founded our team in 2008. Mm. And uh, we are focusing uh, not just on detecting uh, malware, but on digging deeper. So we are uh, not just to find it, but uh, connect all the dots, grab uh, all exploits that connected to these things, and so on and so on. So if the malware attacking uh, some factory, it's our job. We need to reverse engineer it, see what's happening, and so on. Uh, and uh, uh, what is uh, like uh, first, like most interesting uh, advanced persistent attacks that uh, you heard of? Black energy. Black energy. Mm. Carbonac. Okay. First, but before, before. Stuxnet, exactly. You see, 2010, Stuxnet. So we were two years already working, and we were prepared to reverse engineer this, these things. Actually, uh, what we used to protect is something like that. And you still remember, yeah, uh, ATMs. Uh, yeah? <laughs> still running. Uh, how many ATMs do you think still running in percent? Are still running this uh, operating system? 90? 98. <laughs> so, uh, at, and this is uh, like, uh, and when this uh, Microsoft stopped uh, issuing patches for this system? February, this year. February, yeah. So this actual state of information security in the world. And uh, what worse, what we need to protect now is looking like that. And do you know how to update such things? Me? No. Because, uh, for example, to roll up updates, what you do? You have a production server, you have a testing server, so you roll up, uh, roll up update in testing environment, everything goes okay, then you move to uh, production server. To roll up updates here, you need to build another one, the same, <laughs> test everything, roll up, hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and th these things like uh, it built like 20 years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and it still works uh, as it uh, was designed. And the worst thing is that these things are connected to internet. They were not designed to be connected, but they are. Uh, very often we do uh, like a security audit or uh, such kind of things, and in one, uh, uh, such uh, incident, we came to a similar thing uh, and understood that um, a developer is that there is additional ADSL modem in the network. Yeah. They said, "Okay, it is electricity plant, power plant. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why do you need the here additional ADSL modem?" And it goes straight to the internet. So everybody thought, "Oh, this is some attacker." No. How do you think who it was? Engineer. Lazy engineers that don't want to uh, go to the work if uh, something emergency happens. He just uh, remote desktop to his working, lab, uh, working uh, computer and everything is okay. Yeah. So, um, uh, three years ago, we draw such a pyramid. Uh, at the bottom, internet announces, spam, 
DDoS attacks, uh, Trojan loaders, spyware, adware, you know, different kind of uh, mass malware. In the middle, cybercrime gangs. They are financially motivated. Main goal is to steal as much money as it possible. And on the top, like top-notch malware writers, uh, nation uh, state, states like uh, with unlimited budgets, unlimited time. Yeah, you do, you do understand what, it, what does it mean. Like uh, what happened next? Uh, number of uh, such attacks rose in these two segments, top segments. And after that, we predicted it, the line disappeared. And eventually all these techniques that were used by nation states, all these technologies, now they are, now normal criminals, now they are using it. And I will show you a lot of examples of such things. And as I mentioned, Stuxnet was like a first drop. And uh, so they came and we started revelating uh, such attacks uh, one by one and not only for sole uh, like profit of our company but we made it public so the general audience and uh, or people around the globe can benefit from it and know how to, de how to detect it and how to protect it against such things. Uh, and every time we detect something new uh, it's, uh, and we publish something new, it's like a climbing on the top of a mountain. Because uh, yet another big uh, leap we did in 2016, it's uh, uh, joint work with uh, Symantec, Threadmicro, uh, Navetta, and uh, a dozen different other uh, companies. Uh, uh, it is a report on Blockbuster uh, malware or Lazarus Group that were responsible for Sony hack and other hacks. But I think Sony was the most uh, uh, interesting one. And Project Sauron this year, uh, uh, very interesting by the way, I will uh, talk a bit more uh, later on about it. So, uh, for those who already faced APTs, the advanced persistence in their networks, they know it is like a mite in your network. Hard to get rid of, really hard. Hard to detect. If you get rid of it, they just come back another day. And why they are here? Is it a strategic position, so why? Uh, in some cases, they are after uh, your business itself. So they... Uh, trying to steal your uh, innovations, blueprints, uh, trying to uh, understand how your business operates. They are after your business plans and your financial documentation. Uh, also, uh, they are trying to understand your network, uh, your con uh, network of your, con uh, uh, like who, who you speak, who you sell, and so on. And uh, they use this trust and they uh, can uh, like write to these people uh, uh, and say that it is you writing them and uh, get access to uh, networks. If you are, like, let's say, IT company, what is the most valuable asset? Most valuable asset for them is uh, your digital trust that other people put in your company and they're trying to steal it very easily, your digital certificates, your uh, credential for different systems, uh, your uh, uh, different uh, documentation. And uh, in some cases, we even saw uh, criminals were after uh, physical uh, plans, floor plans of offices. Why? God knows why. But I'm afraid of it. <laughs> And uh, if you are a research institute, uh, they are uh, after some scientific uh, uh, stuff, they are after your secret studies, especially if they are connected to some military studies. Uh, and they are trying to understand, uh, like, uh, if you have like, government grants, that means the study is very interesting. Uh, and uh, also they use these institutes, institutes uh, and research academia as a proxy, net, uh, proxy to 
exfiltrate data from uh, different organizations. Small example, Radian malware. Uh, what they did, uh, they infected uh, several key organizations in a country. Let's call it country X. Uh, in, involving uh, president office uh, and uh, telecom uh, uh, provider. And also they uh, can, uh, infected research institute. So yes, uh, like people who are uh, protecting uh, government on network, they uh, really look after who is, uh, where their traffic goes. And actually, they uh, use this research institute as a proxy to proxify network, uh, traffic from governmental network to research institute and then out of the country. Uh, and that's not the end. Uh, also, they're trying to understand uh, business procedures of uh, some organizations uh, and then blackmail people. Uh, and it happened several times already. Uh, so, this is like main motivation uh, for APT attackers. And what do they use? Let me introduce you three nice guys. Uh, so, this is like f very fast explanation. Zero day, one day, all day. Uh, all these guys, uh, uh, so your network is well protected, but they need to get into somehow. And uh, in some cases, uh, people do uh, leave the door open, get in, but in most cases, uh, the door is closed. So to get the key to this closed door, they need to use some kind of uh, uh, exploit. So zero day is the exploit that there is no prevention against it. Yeah? Uh, it means uh, nobody knows about it, it costs uh, $100,000, sometimes more, and uh, it's very efficient. Uh, all day is a zero day, a retired zero day. <laughs> so, uh, but considering how slow everybody updates, it means it's still effective. Uh, if you remember Configure Worm, Three months after it was uh, uh, released, the patch uh, after it was released, the patch for this uh, vulnerability that uh, Configure Worm used, still eight million computers were vulnerable. Eight million. And one day, uh, one day is an interesting concept. Uh, what bad guys do? They just reverse engineer patches that vendors issue, and they look. Mm -hmm. They just patched this chunk of code. Mm -hmm. Let's check. Can we play with this chunk of code? Yes, okay. Now we have a working exploit. Yes, it's not uh, such effective as zero day, but still, considering that everybody updates very slow, it, will be, uh, it can work. Okay, after they get in, they need to bypass internal security of your network, of your castle, yeah? Uh, so, like in a castle, you, everybody has identity tags, yeah, yeah? and uh, guards checking them. And this text in uh, computer world is uh, certificates. So, what they do? They issue fake certificates, but it's easy to spot, yeah? You know, like, any normal guard, guard will check, oh no, it's fake certificate, you're not allowed to do anything. Uh, what they do also, they steal certificates from vendors. Uh, Stuxnet uh, used stolen certificate. Uh, like uh, a lot of APT attacks uh, use stolen certificates. Uh, so it just the uh, stole uh, in, uh, so signing mechanism, like all the needed files, and that's it. Uh, also, they uh, what they do, they uh, do it in a legal way, kind of. So they just register a firm that sells uh, vegetables and uh, some other fruits. And also this company has a uh, uh, certificate for, digi uh, for digital signing files. Why? I don't know, but it works. And uh, also what we saw is a forged uh, forge certificate. So sometimes uh, people use uh, weak uh, encryption method or, or two uh, small uh, keys and uh, bad guys can just uh, forge a certificate. Uh, after they get in, uh, so 
they understand that everything is okay, they can need to move, move on. And they, in most cases, they just uh, upload some first stage implant. Uh, and this implant searches for needed workstations and then uh, uploads all other modules. So uh, when you do incident response, uh, it's very hard to get all the modules of a uh, given uh, APT. And what they can do? They can do a lot of stuff. Uh, like every uh, time they do is uh, file, uh, file system, getting passwords, sound recording, screen recording, uh, uh, and even uh, uh, smartphone infection. Uh, and uh, in the most advanced uh, uh, attacks, what we saw, uh, they demonstrated a variety of other things, like uh, register-based uh, virtual uh, file system, so when you do a forensic, you will find nothing interesting on the file system. Jailbreaking my bioloys, uh, they do uh, firmware uh, infection of hard drives. The only way to uh, disinfect uh, such hard drive is to take some, something very heavy and do like. Uh, and uh, GSM station, uh, stations intercept, uh, and what we saw like uh, this year is full network compromise, like uh, full, f the network of uh, thousand computers is compromised, but everything is in memory. It means that uh, the persistence modules uh, is on only on several key servers. So every time you switch on your uh, PC, it's clean. And like several minutes after, it's infected. You restart it, it's clean. Several minutes after, it's infected. Uh, and another thing that we also spotted uh, during the last few years is a heavy usage of whitelisted programs, like legitimate programs. Uh, PowerShell scripts, uh, VNC uh, files, uh, VNC program, and so on. And now you know everything about like uh, how they get in, uh, but what is the last thing is how to initially penetrate uh, one system that they need. What do they do? Good old spare phishing. Works very well. Uh, don't think I think everybody saw such uh, email, uh, such emails. Um, social networks and instant messaging the same way as uh, spear phishing, watering holes. So what they do, they infect uh, a website uh, that uh, employees of a company would uh, sooner or later uh, use. For example, you run some kind of uh, scatter system, and sooner or later you will go to the uh, schedule vendor website to download some files. You uh, they hack this website and replace files. So you download uh, your SCADA system patch plus malware. Uh, and uh, hospitality networks. Uh, this is, it, it's really interesting vector also. Um, for those who travel a, a lot. What is the first thing you do when you uh, check in your hotel? After checking, Wi-Fi exactly. <laughs> yeah, asking for Wi-Fi. And uh, what criminals do? Uh, they uh, uh, infect uh, uh, hotel network, and they know that in a given day, given person will be in this hotel, and then switch off on the infection. Uh, when uh, a person checked in in a hotel uh, and wants to connect uh, to her uh, Wi-Fi, he needs to uh, type in his room number and his surname. Enter. After the uh, after it, they see this. Oh, uh, the, this person uh, connected to Wi-Fi. Let's show him your Adobe Player is outdated. Person clicks OK because it's a legitimate window of Adobe Player. Uh, it downloads Adobe Player installation package, 
Wiz, uh, but it's signed not by Adobe, but some uh, German website for um, uh, strange German website. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, it embeds original Adobe Player update and uh, malware. After malware uh, get installed, it does nothing for 180 days. So when uh, this laptop returns back into the network of an organization, then only then it switches on. And it's particularly impossible to understand how this laptop was infected. Um, and USB drives, still effective. Like, uh, uh, because uh, people, you know, like still using USB to like give me a uh, let's transfer pair of files to your computer. No, like it's so using Wi-Fi, it's too slow. Let's use USB. Uh, and the last thing is interdiction. Interdiction actually it is a military term. Uh, is there any military in uh, in the room? Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, what uh, what they like do uh, they. Uh, like, uh, they took this technique from militaries. Uh, they, uh, when uh, somebody uh, buys uh, equipment, hardware, for example, disks, servers, uh, and so on, they just arrive already infected. So you get them into your system, and they're already infected. Uh, and also what we saw is uh, in, on one uh, conference, uh, uh, attendees of the conference got uh, CD disks with materials and uh, like uh, photos and so on and so on. And some of the uh, people got uh, like better version of this, <laughs> up up upgraded version of these disks. <laughs> So somebody re replaced this disk uh, uh, during the uh, sending process. So, do you remember, yeah? Lime is disappearing. This, might, uh, this line, I mean. And uh, it, we already mentioned it, yeah? Bangladesh uh, hack, 88 millions, 81. Like they were trying to steal one billion. But uh, typo, uh, one letter, one wrong letter, and only 81 millions. But still, it's a quite huge amount of money, believe me. <laughs> uh, another case, uh, uh, 8.8 uh, 8 million in ATMs uh, in Japan. Uh, the same story in Thailand. Uh, and one day, one Central European bank came to us and showed us a similar video. Um, so um, it is a, one of the capitals of, in Central Europe. And as you can see, this guy didn't insert his credit card or even touched ATM. Now he need to send SMS, uh, confirming that he is standing on, in the on the uh, like in front of the right ATM machine. Operator says okay, and this is really hard job. Uh, so when we uh, investigate, uh, like we investigated this ATM machine, we found nothing on it. So ATM was clean. When we came to bank, we understood that uh, it's a mess. Uh, ATM network was not separated from bank network. And we found uh, tr banking Trojan that was used to uh, attack bank itself. Uh, yeah, it's quite, quite a long operation. Uh, but uh, it was two years ago. It, is, it was two years ago. Uh, and they use the same techniques to uh, issue limitless credit card. Another story. 
uh, winter. Cold winter, several cities, black party vans with huge guys inside. They got out of party van, go to ATM machine, insert, um, get a credit card, insert it. Give me money, okay, give me money, okay. Give me money, okay. Give me money. No, you don't have any more money. Okay, let's go. They got into the car and drive 200 meters to the next ATM. <laughs> Give me money. <laughs> Give me money. And in several cities at the same day. And with the same card. As you can understand, uh, it's quite a cool card. It's not even black <laughs> or gold. <laughs> It's the best cut uh, in the world. But how they achieved it, you wouldn't believe. By clicking. <laughs> um, have you ever lost your uh, credit card? <laughs> uh, so what you do when you lost your credit card? Yeah. Exactly. And on the other side of the line, there is a nice girl. Uh, she uh, talks to you like, hello, uh, nice to meet you. <laughs> what is your problem? How can I help you? Please provide your uh, 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 identification information. Yes, your surname, name, uh, number of your card. And what she see at this moment in front of her? This girl in a bank. Uh, yes, yeah, some application with your data. Uh, in in most cases, it's just a web browser uh, web browser application. Sometimes it's a standalone application, but it is application. And uh, there are several big uh, buttons that she can push, like uh, get the list of last transactions, uh, block uh, card, and some somebody uh, some, somewhere down there is a special button roll back last transaction so what they did they infected the bank infected uh, pc of this uh, operator and just click 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 that's it and a uh, bank uh, like in the morning after this uh, nice, uh, strong guys drove through several banks. Uh, so other banks started to call a bank that issued it, this card and asking, money. <laughs> bank said, no, 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 well, no money, uh, sorry. Uh, we don't have any locks. Uh, I mean, no, no transactions. What do you mean no transactions? No transactions, everything rolled back. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> uh, hard situation. Don't know how to solve it. Okay, uh, do you like it? Next story? Yeah, yeah. prepared? Um, it is a good thesis. It's hard to open an ATM safe. Yes, it's hard to open. Uh, if you saw it, it's uh, ATM is about 1,000 and a half uh, kilograms. It has very uh, thick uh, metal plates. You can just uh, open with it with uh, like your hands or uh, bomb it. Uh, not very effective. So the safe is very safe. Sorry, but it is. <laughs> uh, because uh, people that uh, invented uh, this thing, they were like, they understood that they my money should be uh, in a very uh, like well-protected place. The problem is uh, that this safe is uh, um, commanded or operated by a small computer on the top of this ATM. And have you ever seen how well-protected this computer is? No? You can just, uh, in some banks, uh, actually there is a master keys for this uh, door, uh, service door. Uh, in some banks, uh, they change uh, these keys, but anyway, it's a simple key. You can do it like, chuk, chuk, and that's it. Um, and what we saw, so 
Uh, on every ATM, there is a special exe file, SPI services. Uh, it's an uh, extension, that pro Microsoft extension for working with financial services. And uh, we saw a classic virus, like from 90s. It was like, it was like this moment. Oh, wow, something uh, very, very old. Infection of this SPI service. Uh, it guarantees that uh, uh, certainly, at the fir first point, they switched off uh, uh, protection of uh, ATM, but uh, I will explain uh, soon how they did it. Uh, and uh, it guarantees that malicious DLL will be in memory. And uh, they have special magic cards uh, with special track one and track two. If you insert a such card, your ATM will uh, show you this uh, uh, message. But the most interesting part of it was that attackers didn't steal anything. Attackers did what? Didn't steal? Hmm, strange. Uh, so it was a strange moment for us. And we started to dig deeper, as always. Uh, and found this uh, malware reverse engineered uh, and understood that they have uh, several uh, comments. They can take money from a cassette. Uh, it can gather all the information that is uh, on the card. Uh, so read, take one, take two, uh, and then it uh, can. Uh, uh, Print it out because uh, in each ATM there is embedded printer, so very uh, like convenient. Where you just uh, criminal just came to ATM, print it out all the information gathered from this ATM. Uh, it can self destroy, switch to the back mode, um, and so on. Um, on our, in our office we have several uh, testing ATMs, and here are my colleagues. Uh, they inserted a card. It is a very famous carpet bank. <laughs> uh, so you see, uh, uh, we reverse engineered the, this malware and we understood how it operates, so we just uh, reproduced everything. Uh, it uh, asks for a one-time code, but because it is a uh, traditional virus, this vi we know how uh, this algorithm is inside of this virus. So you need just to reproduce it uh, simply. So here I go just uh, issue a comment to give uh, banknotes from the first cassette. Yeah. Give banknotes, enter, and that's it. So it works perfectly, unfortunately. Uh, this is a merger of uh, like techniques that were used by nation states to attack uh, uh, different companies. Now the same techniques is used to attack, for example, financial institutions by normal cyber criminals. Uh, but still, we do a lot of uh, cyber Spanish stories. <laughs> and uh, for today I prepared several. Uh, first one is a cosmic story. What is it? What is it? No, not a comet. Hmm? Close. Hmm? No, kinda. <laughs> okay, it's satellite <laughs> uh, on a geostable uh, orbit, so it doesn't move. <laughs> and to talk to a satellite, you need something like this in the modern world. Plus, you need a dish. Yeah, round and uh, round and cool. Uh, you get uh, your dish connected to this device, DVB card. And you can uh, receive 
signals from uh, satellite. And this is used by uh, APT attackers. What for? Uh, for hiding command and control servers, because if uh, law enforcement get uh, command and control server, it means operation is over. And they can understand how it operates, who are the victims, uh, who were maybe attackers, and so on and so on. So, uh, like, uh, command and control server is the most vulnerable part of any operation. Uh, what they did, uh, they used uh, IP addresses of different uh, satellite users as a uh, command and control server. So, how it works? Uh, let me click, click, click. Uh, malware in some organization calls to a uh, IP address in uh, some satellite network uh, IP address range and uh, sends packet to this IP address. It goes to a satellite and goes down uh, to uh, this uh, user. Unfortunately, this user doesn't, has, uh, doesn't have any open port for this uh, packet. So it just drops it because satellite collection it was very slow and instead of uh, giving a reply back that there is no such open port, they, uh, this packet just drops. And attacker receives this packet. Why uh, he receives this packet? Because there is no encryption on the same matter because uh, satellite link is very slow and there is no encryption. So they receive this uh, message, uh, do all necessary stuff, and reply back using traditional Ethernet. Why they can do it? Because this system, uh, like uh, with original IP address, uh, don't reply back. It just drops the packet. And uh, attacker can simply forge uh, needed packet and reply back. How to find such, uh, uh, let's say, common control server? Quite impossible, because uh, like it's several hundred square kilometers, and anywhere could be uh, this computer. Uh, black energy, yeah. Uh, I, we, it, it was already mentioned today about black energy, and uh, what I wanted to show you is uh, actually uh, they got into a system of several Oblast Energo. Uh, it's uh, like distribution companies uh, uh, in Ukraine. And uh, they switched off several uh, subnetworks. Uh, the worst part of it is that uh, 230,000 people were affected. And uh, two months later, the system is not fully operational. And uh, the more and more APT uh, attackers, uh, they implement something in their uh, platforms. Uh, and first signs of what they, uh, that Black Energy was trying to like, do such attack. It is February 2015. So, like, 11 months they tested solution. Let's call it solution. And then they uh, performed an attack. So, actually, they penetrated a lot of uh, systems, uh, a lot of companies, and uh, they used, uh, for example, they penetrated a small company, then they used VPN connection from this company to main target to uh, infect, uh, to get inside of uh, big network. Uh, also, the, uh, all this story with Black Energy, it started 2007. Uh, and it was just uh, another DDoS uh, bot. And now it is uh, full operational uh, APT, uh, net, uh, let's call it platform, uh, with dozens of plugins. 
uh, it can infect uh, rotors uh, of different uh, makers. Uh, it can uh, uh, work with uh, SCADA uh, of uh, Siemens Make. Uh, it can uh, 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 exfiltrate data from different uh, using different channels. But still, uh, the, like people that w w were means to defend, yeah, uh, uh, network of uh, cr critical infrastructure networks, they did very few, and that's why they were able to, like, they were they had plenty of time to uh, understand how everything works and uh, switch it off. Uh, actually, when uh, people ask me, like, uh, is it uh, possible to switch off any uh, an electric, uh, electric grid in the world? I say no, because in some case, uh, in most cases, they are unique, and it's uh, and each network, uh, electric power network, is designed in a way that is uh, foolproof, and uh, means that it's like. If you switch off uh, several relays, it still will be operational. And uh, one more interesting story, uh, Project Sauron. Uh, actually, it is uh, not our name, it is the uh, name of the de developer's name. <laughs> and what uh, is interesting, uh, it targeted very few countries. Uh, we saw Russia, Rwanda, Iran, and our colleagues from Semantics saw also Belgium, Sweden, and China. So, as you see, not very big set of countries. But uh, it is, the number of victims is very, very uh, high. And uh, they just not just infect several computers, they infect the whole network. And these guys, they definitely read our reports. Because, uh, like, when you do research, you are searching for, for some patterns. And they do, uh, and they did unique, uh, uh, unique uh, configuration, unique files for each victim. Which means indicators of compromise in this case, more or less useless. So what are the uh, like key features? Uh, they have uh, 50 plus plugins uh, for doing different stuff. Uh, they uh, were interested in uh, getting uh, uh, keys, uh, configurations, uh, getting access to service to a special software that was used by government to encrypt uh, messages. And uh, as always, they use uh, very strong uh, encryption algorithms like RC6, uh, RC54, Salsa20, etc., etc. And uh, they use uh, DNS to exfiltrate data. Actually, uh, what they did also to exfiltrate data from uh, uh, networks, and they exfiltrated gigabytes of data, they uh, proxify it through uh, high load servers like. Uh, proxy server of a, an organization, WebGate. Yeah, everybody uh, watching uh, YouTube in this organization, cool. We will use this server <laughs> to exfiltrate data because you wouldn't see any spikes uh, in uh, this case. And uh, uh, everything is sh uh, technical details showed us that these guys, they learned uh, a lot from other extremely advanced uh, actors uh, because uh, they used features from DQ malware, they used features from Flame, and they used features from Region. So, for example, they uh, have ability to infect air gap, ne air gap networks. Uh, they uh, create special partition uh, on USB drives uh, that uh, is not visible from Windows. Uh, but is visible by uh, uh, for malware. Uh, they use uh, uh, registry-based uh, virtual file systems. Uh, they use uh, a Lua uh, script, like kind of Lua script uh, language to operate uh, different uh, to create plugins. Uh, 
so yeah yeah um, and for like i saw i said that as you can see it's like uh race of weapons is always uh, like getting uh, faster and faster. Uh, they n uh, use new technologies. By the way, it's still unknown how they got into this network. No clues right now. And uh, the problem is the line is disappearing not only in a way from uh, that traditional criminals uh, learning from uh, these highly professional uh, guys. But also, once again, Lazarus team. Um, and once again, Bangladesh bank heist. Uh, when you like, do a lot of reverse in engineering and you're, uh, you're starting to find uh, patterns, you like patterns, as I mentioned it. And uh, I know there's like, not everybody likes, uh, uh, they compiled code, but believe me, it looks the same, more or less. Uh, and on the left hand side is a part of code that were used in Sony hack. On the right hand side is a part of code that were found in Bangladesh Bank. Feel the difference? No difference. <laughs> uh, what could it mean? It could mean that these guys, they're active from 2009, they attack everything. They attack uh, South Korean companies, uh, they attack South Korean government, uh, uh, Sony, and now they attack banks. And uh, there are uh, news that uh, also the same problem suffered several more banks uh, in Vietnam and a couple of different countries. Which could may, uh, mean that uh, this group also made like a billion of dollars. Uh, and it's like a new way of uh, uh, getting funds for uh, nation state uh, actors. So it's, uh, this line is not working only in one way, <laughs> but in the other. So the ultim ultimate, go ultimate goal for these guys is uh, power and money. And um, by the way, how they get in, uh, as, uh, when they get in into the network uh, of a bank uh, to bypass uh, security and to start uh, issuing fraudulent SWIFT transactions, they needed to patch two bytes. So they patched two bytes of legitimate implication and it was enough to steal more or less, maybe one billion. Uh, another lesson, there are a lot of uh, ransomware and there are a lot of uh, uh, Viper attacks right now. Uh, it's uh, in Ukraine, it's in Korea, uh, it's uh, in Sony hack, a lot of quoting call attacks and uh, another thing that uh, uh, APT attackers started to use uh, very, very uh, aggressively, I would say, is uh, giving false flags uh, into the, implementing some false flags into uh, their code. What for? Because everybody loves attribution. It is the main uh, question for actually uh, like victim, uh, especially if it is a governmental uh, entity or something like that. And uh, uh, in, in most cases, they are what, what they started to do is to how attribution is done right now. Uh, the best attribution is when uh, law enforcement gets the server, understand uh, who is behind the server, and uh, go to concrete uh, people and uh, provide them to, to jail. Uh, it's the best attribution that could be made. Um, but in digital world, in most cases, we just uh, rely on uh, some 
uh, infrastructure overlaps, uh, content control servers, I mean, uh, in uh, some forgotten debug strings, uh, like in different languages and so on. So on. And they started to just uh, add some strings, for example, in Romanian language, uh, some strings in uh, Spanish. And you started to think, hmm, maybe it's Spanish, maybe not, and so on. So, on. so attribution becomes harder and harder um, for us. And uh, it's more and more cases of fileless malware, and it means harder, uh, uh, harder to do any uh, incident response. Because when you uh, come to a company and starting to do incident response, and you understand that there is no files created on file system, it's a problem. Uh, and uh, when you see work, that uh, all the plugins also uploaded uh, from uh, attackers coming to control so only in memory, it's a big problem. So you just get got like small piece of uh, puzzle without any uh, additional pieces. And I already mentioned it, but so uh, APT techniques actively adopted by cyber criminals. Uh, business supply chains uh, are very uh, interesting uh, method of getting inside of uh, big companies because a company with uh, 50 employees can't afford uh, uh, like big uh, IT security uh, uh, department. Uh, in most cases, we see like the IT guys doing uh, everything from uh, installing software, hardware, and doing information security. Uh, and uh, these small companies, they have access to uh, big targets, uh, VPN uh, or some other credentials, but by some other means, but they have access to these uh, big uh, companies. And they just uh, get inside of small company, which, which is quite easy task, and then get inside big company. Um, so, and there are a lot of uh, companies that are providing uh, this kind of attacks as a service. And not only companies, also, uh, I mean, not only uh, uh, like attack itself, but also malware. Yeah, we heard about the fin FinFisher, uh, we heard about uh, NSO group. So, yeah, it's a commodity right now. Um, nation states, uh, trying to gather as much intelligence as it possible, and they are starting to build uh, larger botnets. And as I showed you, hospitality networks could be uh, an attack vector, especially when it is uh, good, when it is good at hotel, uh, or hotel. Uh, and uh, be careful when you are using free Wi-Fi. <laughs> so as a conclusion, as a conclusion, Many years ago, we said we are here to save the world. It is a slogan of our company. <laughs> and now it's time to choose your digital bodyguard. So um, I hope uh, this presentation was interesting for you. And uh, if you have any questions, please contact me. Uh, Ah, I forgot to add my uh, email, but it's uh, rather uh, easy, uh, yuri.namesnikov at <laughs> Yeah, you can <laughs> uh, find it, you can uh, build it up using uh, uh, a schedule from uh, this conference. So, do I have uh, some time for questions? Yep, cool. Any questions? Thank you for your questions. Uh, actually, we, uh, as you might know, uh, Kaspersky was a target of uh, APT attack. And uh, 
we saw uh, like I came uh, to uh, to my office uh, after a trip and understood that uh, nobody use emails and nobody use phones and in in the uh, middle of our uh, you know, like workplace, it is a desk with a pen and paper with some round things and names of uh, uh, suspicious files. Uh, and the biggest problem was actually that there were no persistence uh, on uh, uh, infected machines. So every time uh, we rebooted machine, we, uh, the machine was clean. Uh, and, uh, but fully non-persistent non uh, like fileless malware, it can be afford, uh, achieved uh, by uh, attackers that they, if they know that they can easily penetrate you once again. So they, uh, these attackers, for example, they were 100% sure that they, were, they would be able to uh, reinfect the system once again. It is achieved by using zero days or it is achieved to uh, as you said, uh, for example, by using uh, vulnerabilities in uh, uh, routers uh, and such stuff that is uh, not easily uh, easily monitored and uh, not easily patched. Yes, so uh, we are moving to a world where would, there would be less uh, persistent uh, modules uh, on in the network. Any other questions? If you're in the second Floor, you gotta yell because we can't see you. Yeah. Or you can jump down here. Okay. <laughs> Actually, uh, yes, they, they uh, maybe they can't go and debug, but they can use. Uh, like infected systems as a debug. <laughs> uh, also, the uh, like documentation is freely available, so they can use it. Um, plus, they can uh, get developer versions and uh, use it to uh, debug uh, malware. Yeah, you can go. Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, as I said, there is no easy solution. Yeah. Uh, I'm like a threat uh, intelligence guy. So, <laughs> But uh, most effective way is to have several layers of protection, certainly. Uh, and uh, like you can just switch on one layer, switch off one layer and uh, be secured uh, because uh, attackers will identify that you don't have this layer of security, it means that you, they can go through this uh, hole into your network. When uh, we're talking about monitoring traffic, uh, and uh, in most cases they use uh, HTTPS, uh, SSL uh, uh, connection to uh, get the traffic out of the network, or DNS, or whatever. Uh, but, uh, what you can do, uh, you can uh, search for, uh, look for anomalies. It's not very easily implemented, uh, but you know, it is uh, implemented in several solutions. Uh, uh, our company provides such solution that uh, looks for such uh, uh, anomalies in uh, network traffic uh, and uh, tries to detect it. Uh, it's it called uh, Kaspersky Anti-Targeted Attacks Platform, actually. Uh, so, yeah, it is possible, but uh, you need to implement some uh, uh, nice logic inside of uh, this system. Because if uh, 
uh, your security officer will get like 100 uh, or 1,000 uh, notifications. Like in on second day, he will just stop sm uh, watching these notifications. It's very uh, uh, hard to uh, find very, very uh, needed uh, and really uh, tied to targeted attack uh, connections. Any other questions? Thanks. Uh, IoT, like uh, we saw already several uh, attacks when, uh, for example, uh, printers were used as a, an initial attack vector. Uh, we saw, uh, so IoT is uh, growing very fast and it's uh, like a disaster for security officers. Like uh, after the university, everything uh, looks for you when you first came to uh, office. It's first shock because you think that your security perimeter is uh, like server and a lot of uh, workstations. But unfortunately, it is not. Your security perimeter right now is uh, uh, workstations, uh, uh, like uh, phones, uh, uh, different fringes, everything. And it all generates traffic and it all uh, connected to uh, uh, internet. Uh, the worst thing is that uh, Consumer electronic lifetime is very short. So when uh, vendor uh, uh, issues new uh, device on the market, the lifetime of this device is like two months. After this, uh, the developers of this uh, device, they are already doing some new device. And if you will find some vulnerabilities and send them to a vendor, vendor uh, would say, okay, it will be uh, patched in the next release of this device. Which means that the that users that bought this device already will never ever get any update. Uh, it is a common situation uh, and uh, certainly uh, hackers can use it to uh, infiltrate networks. But they still have more efficient way to get into. And you know the answer, spear phishing because people still clicking and still opening uh, documents. And people, like most uh, people do have uh, outdated versions of uh, uh, PDF reader, uh, Office Suite, so they just don't need right now to use it as, uh, use IoT as a vector, but they can do it. Thank you again, I'm just gonna stop with the questions at this point because of the, of the time, but thank you again for the presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, organizers, for giving opportunity.